In this Elden Ring build video, I'm going to be showing you my Colossal Knight build. This is an evolution of the Barbarian build, so if you've been playing that and wondering what to do next, then watch on to find out. The Colossal Knight is a strength-based build that takes advantage of the Warcry ability in order to change your charged R2 from an attack into a charging attack where you actually charge forward and pancake enemies with an overhead swing, and then if you use it again, you sort of do an uppercut that knocks enemies into the air. This does absolutely devastating damage and is made possible by the Warcry ability. Because of that, you can't use two weapons because Warcry only buffs your right hand weapon. And also, when you're using R2, you're not attacking with two weapons if you have two equipped. So this is a single weapon build, and you're going to want the biggest weapon you can find that can still be equipped with Warcry. So this means any great swords or colossal weapons, etc., that cannot be slotted with an Ash of War are immediately ruled out. This is the reason that I chose the Great Sword for this build. Not only does it have incredible damage, it's a Colossal Sword, not a Great Sword, but it can be slotted with the Ash of War Warcry, allowing for this build to function. What we do is we use the Axe Talisman and the Roar Medallion. The Axe Talisman increases your charged R2 attacks by 10%, so if you hold R2 until your character actually attacks, you're going to get an extra 10% damage which is huge because those are usually really devastating attacks, particularly with big weapons. And the Roar Medallion increases your War Cry attacks with by 15%. It doesn't actually increase the amount of damage you get buffed by from using War Cry, because War Cry buffs your damage by about 10%, but it'll actually buff the attacks after using War Cry. So that's a 25% damage increase when you're using that charged R2 attack where you charge forward, and that's on top of the amount of damage that ability does already, which is substantial. You're going to see huge damage numbers when using this build, like upwards of like over a thousand pretty early on in the game. Even when you're like your greatsword is only like plus four, plus five, you'll probably start seeing over a thousand damage depending on the enemy that you're doing, which is absolutely incredible. You can one, two shot early game bosses and probably three and four shot middle of the game bosses with this build, depending on the boss that you're facing. And a lot of times you just stagger them and they never even get a chance to do anything, which is just absolutely ridiculous. The third talisman I use for this build is kind of, again, a flex spot depending on what you like. But I really like the green turtle talisman because you tend to empty your stamina bar in a split second and you need to regenerate it very, very quickly. That's a lot of stamina you're going to have with this build because you have high endurance to regenerate. So it's, I feel like that medallion is more effective. Sorry, that talisman is more effective with this build than probably a lot of other builds. However, other talismans you could go with are Erdtree's Favor in order to get more health and more equip weight and more stamina. All of those things are good for this build. You're going to take damage playing this build. You have, you're going to struggle with equip load because you're using like a gigantic weapon that weighs a ton. And having more stamina is just good in general. So that's also a good choice. Another choice you could use for this build is the Claw Talisman if you find yourself doing jump attacks from time to time, which you will, although you're going to be leaning into the charge attacks when possible. That's 15% damage increase on jump attacks, but I do feel like if you're leaning more into jump attacks than you are playing this playstyle, you should probably be playing the champion build that I put together because that fully focuses on those by using two weapons, and I feel like that will outperform this build if you're just relying on jump attacks. Another option for this build is the Viridian Amber Medallion in order to increase your maximum stamina. You really can't have enough stamina with this build. If you get your stamina high enough, you'll actually be able to do three charged attacks in a row. That's probably not likely to happen at level 50, but as you get closer to 100, you'll probably be able to do that, which is absolutely devastating. So how this build works is that whenever you're facing a tough enemy or a group of enemies, you're going to hit L2 in order to buff yourself with Warcry, which increases your damage and is going to change your R2 to that charging R2 attack. And then you're going to prematurely R2 into enemies that are moving towards you, and that's going to stagger them when you attack. You're probably already familiar with this if you watch the Barbarian build, but that's going to stagger them, and then you're going to absolutely pancake them with R2, and if that doesn't kill them, you're going to hit R2 again to finish them off. plays very, very similar to the Barbarian build, but it's even more effective now that you add the Roar Medallion, and you have a stronger weapon. One of the things that's really fantastic about this build is the poise you gain from that charged R2 attack when you're buffed with Warcry. You can literally go through arrows and some attacks in order to connect with the enemy anyway. So if you have trouble with enemies that stagger you, if you can get this animation going at like at least halfway, you, you'll finish it no matter what. And maybe you'll stagger them and be able to finish them off. Even if you trade damage sometimes, it can be a great way to get rid of a tough enemy. 
Another thing about this build that's really fantastic is it absolutely devastates on horseback if you use L2 and R2. Not only does it deal damage when you're dragging it through enemies, but then when it pops up from the ground, it deals incredible damage. And you can just ride around the landscape, and a lot of times it's even more effective just riding around the landscape, pancaking enemies into the air or knocking them down uh, than it is just straight up fighting them. So I highly recommend any area you can use your horse uh, or use torrent just playing mounted. It's so easy to do in a lot of areas. So there's that as well. Moving to the attributes for this build, there are really three that you need, which are strength, endurance, and vigor. Strength is the most important one because not only does it increase your damage by about five or six points per point spent, which is significant, uh, it's also needed to meet the requirements for the weapon. You can two-hand the weapon if you have like 21 strength, uh, the great sword. But if you want to one-hand it, you'll need 32. And if you don't really need 32, you can start wielding at 21 uh, because you're going to be playing two-handed anyway. But if you decide to move on from that to some other weapon uh, that you know does more damage or you like it better for whatever reason, eventually you're going to need more and more strength to wield it. So it's good to have and it also increases your damage. Next up we have Endurance. This both gives us stamina and equip weight, things we both really need for this build. Uh, equip weight is going to allow you to use better armor. This weapon weighs a ton, so it doesn't leave a lot of room for good armor. And even at level 50, you're going to be wearing like okay-ish armor, not great. So as you progress the game further, you're going to want to continue to improve this to not only get that equip weight to increase your stamina. As I mentioned, if you can get your stamina high enough, you can actually do three charged R2s in a row in some cases where it's possible. And that's absolutely devastating. And lastly, you have Vigor for this. We have 25, which is quite a lot and for this part of the game, and you're going to keep increasing that as well. You can't really have enough. One of the things about this build is you trade damage a lot, and even though you take damage maybe sometimes on that first swing, you want to be able to tank the next hit as well so you can continue swinging and finish an enemy off in a couple hits and make fights that, you know, might have lasted a couple minutes on another fight where they were kiting it around, trying to, like, range it down or whatever, dodging out of the way. You can end it in like 10 seconds even though you have to drink a health pot afterward and that's kind of the way this build plays. Just a, another couple of final tips for this build before we wrap up this video. You can use fire grease or other greases on this weapon if you want. Uh, one of the benefits to using a single weapon is that you coat that single weapon. If you're using dual weapons, you only coat one. And fire grease is rather easy to make. You can get it if you go to the Warmaster Shack. There's a little route there. There's rot resin like right in front of the shack. And then the embers are up on the hill. The smoldering butterflies rather. Which is just a little ways away from there. You can just do a loop. And you can just this give you infinite fire grease. But the thing is it doesn't provide that much more damage to you. And in some cases where enemies are fire resistant. It'll actually be detrimental. Um, but there are other greases like blood grease. Which you can use the... Uh, you know, the blood roses for in order to add bleeding. But again, you swing so slowly, I'm not sure that's super relevant for this build. But nonetheless, you may find yourself needing those and they're really easy to get. So make sure you use those farming locations if you want them. And lastly, this build is a great candidate if you like great bows. You know, one of the real detriments to this build is that it lacks range at all. It doesn't have a way to like lure enemies unless you like make throwing daggers or something like that. So if you want to use a Great Bow, this is a fantastic build for that. You could use Great Bow and Colossal Sword, which is kind of awesome. Just keep in mind, you'll probably need a few more points in Dexterity in order to use a Great Bow, depending on which one you want. But this is a great choice for a Great Bow for a build. So if you like Great Bows and you want to use a bow with this, that's a good thing to do as well. Last up, we have our level 50 Mage build. This is going to be a pure ranged Mage build, not a hybrid like uh, the Magus build or the Enchanted Knight so if you wanted to see how to play a mage around level 50, we're going to be showcasing that before we finally move on to the 100 level builds and some other guides as well.